been your done as a... Oh, Miss Briss, you're back and you look so... Healthy, I think, is the word, Carol. And to be honest, I've never felt better. So, how was Miami, Miss Briss? Bit hot for me, Carol, but the course was superb. I feel energised and raring to go. Carol, is it my imagination or is there a duck on the counter? <laughs> yes, Miss Briss. She's been in the reception all morning. It's part of Colin's children's corner. Children's corner? It's a little sanctuary he's building for unwanted farm animals. Ah, there you are, Maisie. <coughs> oh, Mr. Briddus, you're back. How was the course? How was Miami? Never mind that, Colin. I want that duck out of the building, please. And, Carol, could you make sure the public don't go dropping their confectionery all over the centre? I mean, look at the floor. It's covered in these raisins. Yeah. <laughs> Those aren't actually raisins, Mr. Briddus. What are they? They're Dorothy's. Dorothy's? A rabbit, Mr. Briddus. The most adorable creature, but she does tend to leave little deposits about the place. Colin, I want the animals to remain outside the building, please. Carol, everyone in the staff room, five minutes. <laughs> when I came into the centre this morning, some of you may have noticed a new aura about me. If I may say so, Mr. Briddus, you look radiant. Spot on, Colin. From my every pore that exudes calm, well-being and a quiet but huge self-confidence. Is that so, Mr Brittus? Yes, Timothy. And there's a simple reason for it. What, Mr Brittus? I have found my lion. You what? <laughs> my lion, Julie, I found it. That's what the course was all about. Wake up the lion within. A five-day conference for managers on how to seek their inner power. What's this got to do with lions, Mr. Britton? Well, as Clint said... Who? Clint. Clint Ponderosa. <laughs> he was the man running the course. The lion within is that mine of untapped potential that most of us never use, awaiting to be awoken. And he should know. From being a humble postman, he now owns a house in Beverly Hills, three burger chains and a Mustang ranch in Wyoming. So, how exactly do we wake up this lion within, then, Mr. Britton? You simply roar. <laughs> what? You roar like a lion. You see, by physically making the noise of a lion, we wake up that potential inside. In fact, I'd like us all to practice it now. <laughs> yeah, I'd like each one of you, in turn, to stand up and give me a roar. Starting with you... Gabby! Me! <laughs> Gavin, as my senior deputy manager, I'd like you to stand up and give me the first roar, please. Oh, really? Um... <laughs> roar. <laughs> Not much inner power there. Julie? <laughs> roar. Better, Julie. Colin? <laughs> like it, Colin. Tim? <laughs> right, Linda? <laughs> Excellent, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Carol. Remember your assertiveness, Colin. I know, Mr. Ritz, but I couldn't. Roll, please, Carol. Oh, Mr. Ritz. I want you to roll. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what was that supposed to be? It's a roar, Miss Ritz. It sounded more like a squeak to me. I know, Miss Ritz. It's roaring. It really isn't me. Right, Carol. On your feet, please. Oh, no. Close your eyes. Oh. Right. I want you to concentrate on your belly. Now, imagine your belly is a big dark cage, inside of which is a big lion longing to roar. Now roar. <laughs> Better. And again. <laughs> Louder. <laughs> now that is what I call inner power. <laughs> Item numero deux. As most of you know, we have been nominated for the European Award for Excellence, the most prestigious award that a leisure centre can receive. Gavin, les details, s'il vous plaît. Oh, may we, oui, Mr Brutus. Um, Brussels will be sending us an inspector on June the 13th. We're uh, up against the Centre Charles de Gaulle in Paris, the uh, Gesundheit Centre in Frankfurt. Last year's winners. Uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> and the Hurlings Frölings Luft Centre in Copenhagen, so there's stiff opposition. What exactly do we have to do, Mr. Brutus? Europeanise the centre for starters, Linda. How'd you do that then? Well, at the moment, we're catering for only the English speaking sector of the European community. I want to make sure that everyone in the community is welcome. Just to say, Mr. Brutus, that by the time the inspection comes round, you will have the best children's corner in Europe. 
Thank you, Colleen. With only the best tendered animals. Which reminds me, I've discovered the most marvellous new dental floss for pigs. I don't really want to hear about it, Colleen. It gets right inside the snout, Mr. Bitters, right to the That's back enough, teeth. That's enough, Colleen. You should have seen what I extracted the other day. That's enough, Colleen. Right, everyone, end of meeting. Let's use our lions within to win that award, please. Surely there must be someone with a problem. Oh, Gordon, thank God you're here. Can't stop now, my darling. Gordon, I started my counselling three weeks ago and I've only had one client. That is simply because you're not expressing your lion within. Oh, not that again. My darling, if you want clients, you've got to go out there and get them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're right. <laughs> 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 Just about done all the signs in the centre now, Mr. Brutus. But we did have a few problems with the finish for no petting. Hang about, there are only 11 languages here, Linda. Yes, Mr. Brutus. But there are 15 countries in the community. Yes, we know that, Mr. Brutus. But in case you didn't know, of the other four, the Irish speak English. Yes, the, I the, know the Irish speak English, Tim. They also speak Gaelic. You want to sign in Gaelic? Not to mention Welsh and Walloon. Walloon? <laughs> Walloon. It's a Belgian dialect, Tim. On to the sign makers, players. Carol, that's what I like to see staff expressing their line within. Now, I want all these goods marked up in euros. Euros, Miss Bliss. Euros, Carol, the future European currency to be phased in by the year 2002. There's a conversion table. Want it done by first thing in the morning, please. Yes, of course, Mr. Bliss. Yes, of course, Mr. Bliss. Who said that? Who? Oh, don't you recognise me? No. Well, who do you think's been doing all the roaring, my little raindrop? I'm here to help you. Help me? Well, it's about time we got you out of this tawdry little place. After all, you have been here longer than Moses, let's face it. <laughs> what? Well, forgive me, but you are just a dog's body. Are you not a dog's body? Carol? Yes, Gavin? If you get the chance, I wonder if you could manage a little photocopying for me. Uh, yes, what is it? This. <laughs> the Treaty of Rome. Foundation stone of the common market. Mr. Brittis wants it on public display throughout the centre. Oh, yes, very well, Gavin. <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> Go away! I'm sorry? Not you are! Who? He can't see me, my little tulip. Nobody can but you. You're right, Carol. Yes. Fine, thank you. Good. Now listen, my precious plum. You've got to cut the crap and go for what you deserve. What are you doing, Colin? Just finishing off the new enclosure, Linda. For what? Elephants? A Tasmanian chipmunk. Tasmanian chipmunk? It's a rare and very beautiful chipmunk found only in southern Tasmania. It's my showpiece for Euro inspection day. Well, a big fence for a chipmunk, isn't it? But the Tasmanian chipmunk isn't your ordinary chipmunk. They come much larger than usual and can occasionally bite. Hence the need for a sound enclosure. I hope you read those guidelines I gave you on keeping animals in captivity. Don't you worry, Linda. I treat them like my own children. <laughs> oh, Carol. Did you manage to do that photocopying for me? <laughs> Carol. <laughs> photocopying? That's dog's body's work, isn't it, Gavin? I'm sorry? And I am not a dog's body. If you want it done, do it yourself. <laughs> oh, Gavin, Carol, how are you both? Fine. We've had better days, Mrs. Brittus. Really? Well, you'd be pleased to know that I'm offering a 10% discount for all staff counselling. So any problems, no matter how small, don't hesitate to come and see me. I don't have a problem, Mrs. Brittus, but I know someone who does. <laughs> Tall, Carpuzzi, Carpuzzi, Mo. Uineto Carpuzzi, Mo. Where is my watermelon? <laughs> Go on, do it now. <laughs> Have you seen my watermelon? Eggies. <laughs> oh, shut up. I'm going for a coffee. Uh, Julie, what is the name of our judge for Euro Inspection Day? Mr. Kulu something. Mr. Kulu Kundis. <laughs> what nationality is he? Greek. Don't you think it would be a good idea if we showed him that we mastered the basics of his language? Right, so when he walks through the door, I'll tell him the watermelon's in the boot of the car and I'd like a kilo of aubergines. Come in. 
What is it, Carol? Miss Briss, I wonder if I could have a word. I'm rather busy at the moment, Carol. No, he's not. I've had enough for one day. Uh, Julie, first thing in the morning, test on vegetables. Scassy blackout. Pardon? Something I learned off a Greek waiter. <laughs> what is it, Carol? Miss Briss, I seem to recall that at one stage you were thinking of appointing another deputy manager. Yes, I'm still thinking of advertising for the post. Oh, good, because there's someone I think could do the job quite well. If you mean Linda, I don't really think she's got the experience. No, I don't mean Linda. Actually, I mean me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really don't think that's possible, Carol. Why not? You see, I need someone of great confidence and high self-esteem. And as far as those two things go, I don't really think you're top of the tree, are you? No, of course not, Miss Bruce. I'm sorry. Shouldn't have taken up so much of your time. That's all right, Carol. Can we go back at man reception now, please? And where do you think you're going? Go back! and fight for your rights. I don't know what to say. What are you whispering, Carol? <laughs> Nothing, Miss Briggs. Thank you, Carol. Flattery will get you everywhere. Flattery? Miss Briggs, I just want to say for the record that, um... What's that, Carol? Uh, um, I've always admired and looked up to you. I've always admired and looked up to you. Have you? Yes, and it's been such a privilege to work for such an enlightened man. Why, thank you, Carol. Well done, little peach. And I believe I've learned so much from observing you over the years. Brilliant. It's almost worthy of me. So, I just want a chance to put what I've learned into action. So stop wasting my talents and make me deputy manager now! Oh, that's a little crude for my liking. Well, but effective, I guess. This is to announce that Carol Parkinson has been appointed deputy line manager wet and dry with effect from Wednesday 1st of June. That's today. I see. Another one bites the dust. Soon it'll be all management, no workers. Carol. Why Carol? Well, I think it's marvellous news. I think we should all celebrate. Celebrate? Nobody celebrated when I got promoted. Took me years to make deputy. How come Carol does it overnight? Oh, well, she's got a lion within, you see. Oh, yeah, and what have I got? A gerbil. <laughs> I can't believe it, me, deputy manager. Yes, and the view's even better from the top of the mountain. Yes. <laughs> what do you mean, the top of the mountain? Well, you don't think we're stabbing a deputy, do you, my little mango? We've got to think big. <laughs> you sure this is going to work? Trust me. I know how he ticks. Hello, Councillor Druggett. This is Carol Parkinson. I have a little proposal to make to you. Right. I want banners stretching all the way across the roof saying welcome to Whitbury Newtown Leisure Centre in all... 30 different languages and dialects of the community, <laughs> including the patois spoken by the Swiss village of Alpenheim, which has a residential population of 12. Yes, Mr Britters, we know. Instead of banners, Mr Britters, let's just clutter up the roof. Why don't we just fix the European flag to the outside of the centre? We say it all with one simple gesture. Carol, 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 this is not a very good start to your new career, is it? What do we have to use to fix the flag? A ladder, Mr. A ladder, Mr. Bridders. And what is the council regulation regarding staff and ladders? Well, I'm not... Abs we're not allowed up them, are we? And why is that? Because... Because we're not covered by insurance. These things should be tripping off your tongue. Are you sure about that regulation, Mr. Bridges? Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. I think you'll find I'm right, Carol. I remember reading it to Helen in bed. <laughs> Right, where are we? Ladders, ladders, ladders. That's funny. I could have sworn I'd sit. Do you know what I did, Carol? What's that, Miss Bruce? I must have been reading last year's manual by mistake. Which means if there's no regulation in this year's manual, the council must have scrapped it. Which means you and I have got ourselves a flagpole. Yes, and I'd like to volunteer to organise it if I may, Miss Bruce. Excellent, Carol. <laughs> You know, between you and me, I have a hunch that you are going to make one superb deputy manager. And I can't help feeling just a twinge of pride for spotting that lion within. Oh, without you, Miss Briss, I wouldn't be where I am today. Oh, thank you, Carol. You coming? No, I'm going to crack on and order that flagpole, if I may. Good for you, Carol. Keep roaring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, 
Did you know that I'm offering two hours counselling with 25% discount and free cappuccino? <laughs> I've already got a therapist, Mrs Brittis. Have you? And as far as I know, most of the staff are in therapy too. You see, with Mr Brittis as your boss, you have to be. <laughs> yes, I suppose that stands to reason. Oh, what the hell? Right up there, Carol. Yes, fine, thank you, Linda. Are you okay, Carol? <laughs> Stand back, please. Leave this to me. <laughs> How does that feel now, Carol? Fine, thank you, Miss Bruce. A bit over the top for a sprained ankle, Mr. Bruce. <laughs> you cannot give enough support, Linda. I've done the course. <laughs> Uh, Britus. Hello, Gordon. Uh, just ringing to find out how your Euro preparations are going. Fine, thank you, Jack. Heard one of your staff had a bit of an accident. Hmm. News travels fast. <laughs> Carol Parkinson fell off a ladder and sprained her ankle, to be precise. Oh, dear. You are aware of the council rule about staff using ladders? <laughs> Indeed, Jack. And you, of all people, should know that it pertains to last year's regulations. It was passed by full council in January of this year. You know, I think you'll find I'm right, Jack. If you look at the regulations, you'll see there's actually nothing but... <laughs> oh, my God. What's the matter? Good. I've made a terrible mistake. <laughs> which gives me no choice but to resign as manager of this centre. But that's ridiculous, Mr Brutus. It was just a minor oversight. A minor oversight, Gavin, that put one of my staff in danger. If I'd spotted that regulation on ladders, none of this would have happened. It's only a sprained ankle, Mr Brittis. But it could have been fatal, Linda. I could have killed Carol. We all make mistakes, Mr Brittis. Yes, but as manager of this centre, I can't afford to make mistakes. Or should I say, ex-manager. You're not serious about resigning, Mr Brittis? Oh, I certainly am, Colin. With effect from today. What? what? You... And I've been instructed by Councillor Druggett to tell you that the new manager of this centre will be Carol Parkinson. Carol? But she's only been doing it for... That's right. Carol is going to be the new manager of this centre and I hope that you give her the same support that you've given me. I can't believe this is happening. What about your European Award for Excellence, Mr Brittus? Yes, Mr Brittus. Don't you still want to win it? Of course I do, Colin. But the important thing is that this leisure centre wins it. Doesn't matter who's in charge. Right. It only remains for me to say what an honour it's been to have been your manager. I shall miss you all. Please don't go, Mr Brittas. Shall I call you a cab? <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Everyone, back to work. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with you, believe me. Depression is just a symptom of unexpressed hurt. That's all. Absent father, overprotective mother. You've had the classic example of dysfunctional childhood. Can you leave, please, Gordon? I'm with a client. <laughs> Helen, it's a sheep. <laughs> I mean, that was perfect. <laughs> I know, you can be very insensitive. What do you want? I've resigned. Well, well if... You are? <laughs> Mr Brittus, you're back! No, Gavin. I've just come to see Carol, that's all. I believe she's expecting me. Oh. Hang on. What are you doing on reception? Oh, it's Carol, Mr Brittus. She's made a few changes. I'm receptionist now and Julie's deputy manager. Julie? Yes, Mr. Bruce. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I've got to do Jessica's bottle. Yes, that's right, I did say red carpet. I want nothing but the best for the European inspector. Come in. Mr. Brittis is here to see you. Oh, how lovely, Mr. Brittis. Do come in. Sit down. Two coffees, Tim. Yes, Carol? Excuse me? Sorry, Miss Parkinson. Yes? So, Miss Bruce. What can I do for you? Carol, why have you made all these changes? With respect, Miss Bruce, they're no longer your concern. So, how 
may I help you? I wanted to ask a favour, really. I was wondering if you had a vacancy for me. Vacancy? Anything at all. Mowing the lawns, unblocking the drains. That I wouldn't want to tread on Colin's toes. Oh, Miss Briss, I wouldn't dream of offering you such work. No, really, I don't mind. You see, in a funny sort of way, I'd rather be here doing anything than not be here at all. Yes, well, I'm afraid there's nothing at the moment. Oh. If anything comes up, I will, of course, let you know. Thank you, Carol. See Mr. Bridges out, please, Tim. Oh, I've just made the coffee. I said Mr. Bridges is leaving. And don't forget to book my pedicure. No, Miss Parkinson. Morning. <laughs> oh, my God, what am I doing? Poor Mr. Bridges. Yes, poor little man. <laughs> we'll send him some flowers. Poor Tim, poor Gavin, and all the rest. They don't like the changes I'm making. Well, shocking as it may seem, my pretty pedal, they're not meant to. Well, I don't recognize myself anymore. Splendid. None of the staff like me, and I've lost all my friends. Who needs friends, my little pomegranate, when you have power? <laughs> Gordon? No, I'm not, Helen. I think I may need some counselling. <laughs> You've got to make it higher, Linda. I've told you Tasmanian chipmunks are very big animals. Leave off, Colin. It's not your job anymore. Anyway, I can't see why we need barbed wire as well. Just an added precaution. Hey, Colin, the pool's on man. Quite frankly, Julie, I don't give a monkeys. Do I? I never wanted to be a swimming pool attendant. I wish Mr. Brittus were back. I thought I'd never see the day when I'd actually miss him. You should be pleased, Julie. Ow! Oh, you're deputy manager now. Oh, I hate it. It's too much responsibility. Besides, half the fun was making his life a misery. <laughs> anyway, order some air indoors. You've got to close the children's corner. What? Mm. She says, we'll never win this European award of excellence if we've got a lot of dirty animals running around the place. <laughs> Time to make a stand, I think. Bring back Brittus! Going on. We're on strike, Carol. <laughs> we'll get back to work now. Not until Mr. Brittus has been reinstated. I am manager of the leisure centre here, and I order you to get back to work. Down with Carol! Yes, sir. Down with Carol! At least you've remained loyal to me. No, I haven't. I just didn't have the heart to leave the children. <laughs> Bring back Brutus. Bring back Brutus. Bring back Brutus. What am I going to do? Relax, my little marsh too. They'll come round. Once they realise their jobs are on the line. Ah, oh, Carol, just to say that I'm resigning as staff counsellor. Well, Miss Brutus, you're not turning against me too. What? No, it's just that Gordon and I are emigrating. Emigrating? Oh, it's wonderful, Carol. I've just had my first major therapy breakthrough. I've made Gordon see that there's life beyond leisure management. Where are you going? Kathmandu. Kathmandu. Delivered a Buddhist ashram. The children are going to boarding school and Gordon's waiting for me now at the airport. Oh, bye-bye, Carol. I'll miss you. Mm. Oh. <laughs> what have I done? Mr. Bush is emigrating and all because of me. Excellent, my little cherub. You've earned your wings. You got me into this mess. Well, it's time to put the record straight. And where do you think you're going? I'm going to get Mr. Bridges back. You'll do no such thing. Out of my way! <laughs> What are you doing here? Mr. Bridges, don't go! Oh, Carol! I'm going to Kathmandu to start a new life, Carol. Nothing's going to stop me. I tricked you, Mr. Bridges. What? I deliberately fell off the ladder, Miss Bruce. Knowing you blame yourself for not spotting the rule about staff going up ladders. And the reason you didn't spot it, Mr. Bridges, was because I swapped the labels. <laughs> also, I could become manager. <laughs> I knew it was too good to be true. <laughs> Mr. European inspectors here. Right, positions, everyone, please. Positions. Devin, cue the music. Oh, yes, 
Calamera Kirios Kulukundis. To Canada. Hang on, you're not Mr. Kulukundis. Oh. My name is Lottie Laldrop. I'm from Denmark. I'm afraid Mr. Kulukundis was taken ill. Gavin, kill the music. <laughs> Yes, of course. And let me introduce you to my staff. This is Julie. And so we come to the final leg of our grand tour, the Children's Corner, a little animal sanctuary run by my other deputy manager, Mr Colin Weatherby. Colin, this is Miss Loudrup, the European inspector. A pleasure to meet you, Miss Loudrup. <laughs> let me introduce you to the family. This is Bertha, Monty, Richard, and here is our newest member and my special surprise for today, Terry, the Tasmanian chipmunk. Colin, there's nothing there. Hang on, the padlock's gone. I know. That's because I put it back in the fire escape door where it's supposed to be. Oh, my God. Oh, hey. I don't know about you, but I could murder a coffee. Mr. Britas. Not now. Good on Britas. Staff of Whitbury Leisure Centre. This is the most Euro-friendly leisure centre I have seen. Even though you did forget to put up signs in Schmurditch the dialect spoken in my village. <laughs> Nevertheless, it gives me great pleasure to present you with the European Award for Excellence. <laughs> what was that? That was my receptionist. She tends to roar occasionally. <laughs> Come on, Terry. Good boy, Terry. Terry, Terry. Here. Terry! Terry, come back! <laughs> Terry! Well, Miss Loudrup, bon voyage. Or, as they say in Greek, Kalo Taxidi. Mr. Britas. Not now, Colin. But Mr. Britas. Colin. Perhaps see you in Denmark sometime, Mr. Britas. I don't think so. Went to Copenhagen a couple of years ago, found it rather dull. I'm sorry <laughs> to hear that. Where did you visit? The airport. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Lottie. What a nice lady. Mr. Britas. Yes, Colin. It's Terry, the Tasmanian chipmunk, Mr. Britas. He's escaped. I've told you before, Colin, those animals are to be kept in their enclosures. You don't understand, Mr. Britas. You see, Terry isn't from Tasmania, and he isn't actually a chipmunk. What do you mean? I was keeping it as a surprise. You see, when you gave your talk about finding the lion within, I thought... You thought what, Colin? <laughs> Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had a real lion as a celebration, and then when Whitbury Zoo said that Terry needed a new home... Have you done what I think you've done? <laughs> yes, Mr. Britos. And I'm afraid that the lion within is... without. <laughs> <laughs>